Tough award winner, and he's going to let us know. Now you can have a bush for that stuff. <laughs> First of all, I just want to say thank you to the VFW uh, just for this. I mean, it's such a blessing to me to have veterans that care so much after they serve uh, because it's my future. It's, I mean, I'm the future of America, me and the students that are in here. And it means so much to me that these men are fighting for something that's so beautiful. And that is the American dream. It's such a beautiful thing. Um, so I just want to say, Congratulations to the other students. I mean, for 11 out of 500, so that says something. Awesome. I'd like to say thank you to my family. Uh, we're so happy. I mean, I get to pay a little bit towards college. <laughs> so uh, I want to say uh, thank you to the DFW Post in my area. Commander Lee, he has been there for the whole step of the process and telling me all about this. And I'm so thankful for him just being there for me. And then Commander Phillips at the district level, just we haven't had much time to talk, but I know that he cares. And uh, lastly, just thank you all, uh, the veterans that are here. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I solemnly swear that I will support the family constitution of the United States against all enemies. One beautiful thing about being an American is that no matter your race, gender, faith, morals, or ideals, your rights are protected under the constitution that was defended every day by our former military and is defended currently by the brothers in arms. Our veterans, they fought for change, fought for equality, and they fought for opportunity, knowing that they themselves may not be the beneficiaries but that others would. There are 17 million of these former freedom fighters in our nation today. It is a great privilege to live among so many people willing to voluntarily serve their citizens in this country. Nothing is more worthy of honor than one who considers someone else's needs above their own. In November of 1919, President Wilson proclaimed November 11th as the first commemoration of Veterans Day with the following words. To us in America, the reflection of our mystic day will be filled with solemn pride and the heroism of those who died in the country's service and with gratitude for the victory, both because of the thing which it has freed us from, because of the but because of the opportunity it has given America to show her sympathy with peace and justice in the councils of the nations. On Veterans Day, we stop everything to recognize America's veterans for their patriotism, love of country, and willingness to serve and sacrifice for the common good. While we only designate one day a year for this, it should be obvious to all that our debt to our military service men and women is something so far out of reach. What should be the payment for a life sacrifice for your good? There is only one reasonable response. As a nation, we need to give these heroes more than one day. One in 10 veterans are disabled. They deserve the best in medical services that our country has to offer from their wounds of war, physical and emotional. They deserve the best education we have to offer and a better use of their trained skills. In 2009, there were approximately 100,000 to 200,000 on any given night homeless veterans, and veterans are twice as likely as other Americans to become chronically homeless. That number should never even reach one. Veterans are this great nation's history, and they are our future military's inspiration and pride in all they fought for. Our government's responsibility is to provide for the general welfare, and an American veteran deserves so much more than what is rightfully owed to them. If we fail to honor veterans or put little to no value for what they have delivered us from, then we quickly lose what we have ensured. As Benjamin Franklin stated, the tree of liberty is watered by the blood of patriots. If we value our freedom, then we most certainly must value our American veteran. Daily, we lose about 1,000 World War II, Korean, and Vietnam veterans. Without them, we will lose valuable stories, unrecorded history, but even more so as a nation, we will lose 